Hey guys, Christina here and welcome back to my channel. So, in this video I'm going to talk a bit about how I fulfill my weekly goals. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to achieve this week was come up with a new sketchbook design. And I always do this towards the end of each week. I write a list of art-related things that I want to do the following week and it just helps me stay on track and stay productive. But yes, I wanted to work on a new sketchbook design and I really wanted to use a sketch from my uh, sketchbook tour that I like, showed you uh, a few videos ago. And I wanted to use this sketch of this pirate looking girl and I wanted to take what I've already had, complete the sketch because I think at that point I only had a face and I wanted to come up with a color scheme for the sketchbook cover because the sketchbooks that I use they have like a craft cardstock type of cover so they are a blank canvas you can alter them however you want and I will show you the finished sketchbook somewhere in this video I'll show you a clip of it and if you want to see pictures of it I think I'll post pictures on Instagram and also um, there will be a listing for it in my Etsy shop if you want to look pictures at pictures um, so you be able to find it in the description of this video. But anyway, we're not talking about the sketchbook itself, we're talking about my process of actually creating the art that's gonna go on top of the sketchbook. This is not something that I've mentioned before and the whole sketchbook design thing is a relatively recent thing in my life um, and I haven't talked to you a lot about it. But I always do a dry run before I start working on the sketchbook cover itself. I prefer to complete the piece that's going to end up on the cover first on paper, just so I can make sure that I have the right colors, that I know in what order I want to lay the colors, and that I have the right composition. So that's why I... <laughs> like finish the piece on paper first just to make sure that I'm happy with it because I don't want to end up with a sketchbook that I'm not happy with. So after I completed the sketch of this pirate girl I took a picture of it because I was sketching it on an A3 sheet of paper. I took a picture of it, I resized it in Photoshop and I printed it on an A4 and then I used tracing paper to transfer the outlines of that image onto a sheet of scrapbooking paper. Uh, the sheet is that white and blue stripey design thing that you see. Um, it comes in a 12 by 12 size but I cut it down to an A4 just because uh, the cover of the sketchbook is with kind of that dimension. It's an A5 but obviously it's the same proportion. and. I traced the outlines onto the scrapbook and I started coloring. Now it really depends on your design how much details you want to transfer initially but because I knew I'll have some bits that are going to be black and some bits that are going to be red and that it's going to be kind of difficult to add these colors on top of the white ink that I was going to use for the biggest portion of the image. I knew that I'll have to trace those details in advance and leave them blank just so I can add those colors straight onto the paper instead of onto a layer of ink because I knew I was going to use markers and sometimes they get really slippery and uneven uh, when you're trying to cover a large area over um, a dried ink because a few layers of dried ink they they tend to be a bit glossy at the end, so it's a bit difficult sometimes to work on top of that. And I use my Red Spectrum Noir marker for the tentacles wrapping around the girl and I use a black sharpie for the eye patch and for the anchor. Now another reason why I like to do dry runs of my uh, sketchbook designs onto paper is because I like to um, experiment with um, leaving parts of the scrapbooking paper uh, to be visible within the design and what I mean by that is if you look at the image she has the character kind of has a headband that I never colored 
and I intentionally left blank just so you see that background from the scrapbooking paper running through the design as well and I wanted to make sure that this is going to be something that I'm going to like and something that I would want to replicate in the final sketchbook and I kind of really liked it so I decided to keep that element for the sketchbook as well and then after I was done with the red and the black I started layering the white ink. Now the paper that I was using for this particular artwork was very porous and it was drinking up the white ink uh, but I still prefer to use ink instead of acrylic paint because from my experience when you're tra trying to cover up a design on scrapbooking paper and you want an even layer you would typically need to do at least two or three layers of white before you're able to add your designs on top. And with acrylic paper, if you add three layers, thick layers of acrylic of acrylic paint, I think I said acrylic paper just there, but anyway, if you add a few layers of acrylic paint on top of each other, um, it's it turns into kind of a thick layer and when you start working on top of it with fine liners, Sometimes you crack or peel parts of the layer and it looks kind of ugly whereas with the ink it dries into a thinner layer and even though it's still possible that you're gonna damage that layer with the tips of your fine liners if you're careful enough you're less likely to do it than if you're going over acrylic paint. So that's why I use my Winsor & Newton white ink um, I think I did maybe three or four layers of ink and you're still kind of able to see the stripes going through the character but it looks very intentional at least in person I don't know how well the camera is picking it up but it looks pretty cool uh, in real life so that's what matters um, after I was done with the white I used the sheet of tracing paper again to transfer the rest of the details so the actual facial features of the character and also some strands of hair that I quite like in the initial sketch and I just went over all of that with a note fine liner. Again, I don't want to damage my favorite fine liners on artwork like this because it's possible that you're gonna damage the fine liner when you're going over ink or paint so I just want it to be on the safe side. And here I'm using a pretty cool tool that's like an early birthday present. My birthday is not till Saturday but um, this cool thing I kind of got a bit earlier and it's a foiling pen so it's basically a hot tool that you can use over foil and it transfers the foil onto your page. So you use uh, some gold foil with the pen to add some shimmer just because I was curious and I wanted to see what it's gonna look like. But that's pretty much all that I did for this piece. I really hope you guys enjoy it, like this video if you did, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week guys. Bye bye!